Welcome to the IFRS YouTube channel. This is a summary of the lecture on translational cell carcinoma, which is delivered through the Zoom platform by the International Federation of Rural Surgeons. The translational cell carcinoma of the bladder is one of the common malignancies, especially in men. In fact, it forms about 6% of the total malignancies in men and 2% of the malignancies in women. And uh, usually it's a transitional cell carcinoma in the bladder, but very rarely we can have uh, adenocarcinomas in the bladder. And this is one of the malignancies which has a definite uh, risk factors. For example, uh, it has been uh, proved that smoking is one of the contributing factors for malignancies. And then uh, people who work in uh, certain industries like paints, dyes, metals, and petroleum products, and leather and textile workers, they are much more prone to TCC than others. And it's also that many of the food uh, preservatives contain chemicals that cause uh, TCC of the bladder. And hence, uh, people who are drivers, who are mechanics, and uh, people who have uh, genetic factors need to be very careful and uh, have frequent checkups to make sure they detect even if they have malignancies very early. And in some areas of the country, especially the, when the water is contaminated with arsenic, and uh, whenever we treat uh, water with chlorine, chlorine the incidence is higher. And earlier, a couple of decades ago, when open wells were common, cystosomiasis is one of the contributing factors of bladder irritation and uh, TCC of the bladder. And the graphs here show that the, there is a definite risk associated with the tobacco, especially in men. And of course, uh, occupation also plays a important role in uh, malignancies. And what are the symptoms? One of the reasons that we need to carefully evaluate is that the irritative voiding symptoms, which can uh, present because of the bladder outflow obstruction, is exactly the same symptom that uh, can arise with the carcinoma or the TCC of the bladder. And uh, these present in about one third of the patients. While the most uh, common symptom is hematuria, or blood in the urine, which is either gross hematuria where people can see it or uh, microscopic hematuria. Very rarely they can cause uh, back pain and uh, low abdominal pain and urinary retention, if they, especially if they have group which comes in blood. And what are the investigations which are necessary in uh, rural areas? Urine analysis is the most uh, important uh, investigation because uh, the earlier you detect hematuria, they immediately warrant uh, diagnostic cystoscopy. And these lesions are fairly simple to find in cystoscopy. And ultrasound examination if they are available again, uh, quite helpful. So you need to fill the bladder and uh, as shown here, it might be possible to see the lesion. In the West, uh, urine cytology and uh, sometimes even sniffing dogs have been used to diagnose this malignancies. And how do they look on uh, cystoscopy? This picture is, this is probably the most uh, common presentation that we see, like a seaweed or frond like appearance, but then they can uh, appear in different ways too. And one need to have a high index of suspicion when they're not looking like a typical seaweed appearance. Although detailed uh, staging is available, the most important thing you need to assess is that whether these are superficial or involving the muscle. Because the treatment dramatically changes once they are invading the muscles. Then you need to remove the bladder 
which increases the morbidity quite a bit and uh, also we need to have a drainage and uh, the entire outlook of the patient is very different. And again, once it spreads to the muscle, it can easily spread to the other areas. So it is very important to detect the lesion before it becomes muscle invasive. Of course, the further staging is primarily to assess the prognosis. So there is a low risk when the small, tiny tumors, which are detected fairly early, and they also have a recurrence rate of about 37%. And that is the reason why you need a systematic uh, scopies to follow up during the post-op period. And then if they're multiple tumors and uh, slightly invasive tumors, they form the intermediate risk. And once they involve the muscles, then it, the entire outlook is very different. And what is the treatment? We're primarily going to talk about the non-muscle invasive tumors, so tumors which are confined to the bladder. Here, the transurethral resection has been, again, like TURP, the gold standard. And when you're taking biopsy, you need to remember that we need to check for muscle invasive. So you need to take a piece of tissue, which has a little bit of muscle and the tumor, to demonstrate that there is no muscle involvement, investment. And then uh, after that, uh, TURP is the standard treatment. But again, if you look at the thing, so TURP you keep resecting, but then uh, the bladder is uh, shaped like this. So it needs a lot of experience to resect without causing perforation of the bladder. And once you perforate the muscles and go outside, what is uh, essentially a tumor which is confined to the muscles, you can uh, possibly spread it outside also. So then the treatment that we offer, which you described for prostate, the vaporization is a very good method because here all you need to do is just keep uh, touching the lesion. Once it, uh, just with a touch, you can keep vaporizing. But of course, this needs to be done after you have a biopsy. If it is a carcinoma and there are multiple lesions, earlier we used to use uh, immunotherapy with BCG. There was a time when we had to break about uh, 60 vials and uh, through an infant feeding tube, keep the BCG inside for about uh, 40 minutes or half an hour, I mean, one hour. And then, uh, keep my, I mean, drugs like doxorubicin, mitomycin C, and valrubicin, these also could be left uh, inside the bladder. But then these are not as good as uh, actually I mean, looking at the lesion and uh, vaporizing it or removing it. And the radical cystectomy is essential once the tumor goes outside the muscle. Even in best of the centers, it has about 8 to 10% uh, mortality. And again, the morbidity also is very high. And all the more, it's important that we detect it early and uh, offer treatment uh, as before it spreads to the muscle. And what about rural areas? See here, if you're having a regular follow-up, which means that uh, you need monthly cystoscopies, till three negative scopies are there. And then uh, once in three months, again, till you wait for three negative scopies. And then maybe you can make it uh, once a year. And these uh, check cystoscopy, which is, uh, can be done in the rural areas. And we can use what is called a Bugby electrode. This is a small electrode which can uh, be passed through even the low cost uh, laptop cystoscope that we had assigned. And all you need to do is just uh, touch the lesion. So this is a very simple method, which is possible in rural areas by almost anyone who learned how to do cystoscopies. But the important is that the patient needs to come for regular follow-up. Initially, monthly follow-up. This, if you ask the patient to come to a 
center which is far away, it might be difficult for them, so they may not turn up. And that is the reason why we designed this uh, in a rural urology practice certificate course, where it is possible to learn how to do these uh, minor procedures like cystoscopies or check cystoscopies or diagnosis and all those things. And with a very low cost investment, which is just a small cystoscope, it can be connected to the laptop. You can contact us for further details. And uh, these are well-defined uh, courses, which have uh, proper training and assessment. So if you're interested, you can uh, contact uh, Mr. Keso or us uh, in the addresses given. Thank you for your attention.